Hello, my name is Jamie Knukin, and I'm an IBD specialist at the University of Michigan. Welcome to the IBD 200 series. In this video, we will be talking about dysplasia and inflammatory bowel disease. Dysplasia is something that a pathologist defines as an abnormal presence of cells within tissue that typically is a stage that precedes cancer. Colonic dysplasia is something that we are worried about in patients with inflammatory bowel disease, but dysplasia can be found in multiple tissue types throughout the body. Dysplasia develops when normal tissues develop atypical features. There are varying degrees of dysplasia, including indefinite for dysplasia, low-grade dysplasia, and high-grade dysplasia. High-grade dysplasia is thought to be a precursor for the development of colorectal cancer. We know that there are several risk factors that can increase the development of dysplasia in patients with underlying inflammatory bowel disease. These risk factors include male gender, longer duration of disease, greater extent of colonic disease, a family history of colon cancer, younger agic diagnosis, and the presence of a condition called primary sclerosing cholangitis. There are several modifiable risk factors for the development of dysplasia, and these include increased inflammatory activity or inflammation, the presence of backwash ileitis, the presence of pseudopolyp formation, a history of dysplasia, or a history of mass or stricture of the colon. The risk for dysplasia in colon cancer is increased in patients with inflammatory bowel disease compared to those of the general population. Dysplasia can typically be detected during a colonoscopy. There are very clear recommendations about which patients should be performing surveillance colonoscopies and how often. Patients who undergo surveillance for dysplasia are those who have risk factors for developing dysplasia, including patients with ulcerative colitis at least beyond the left side of the colon, Crohn's colitis involving at least a third of the colon, and patients who have had a disease duration greater than eight years. In addition, patients with underlying primary sclerosing cholangitis, or PSC, should begin their surveillance at the time of their diagnosis. In the next video, we will talk about how we perform surveillance for dysplasia and colon cancer in patients with inflammatory bowel disease. I'm Jamie Knukin, and thank you for watching.